Welcome to The Huddle. I'm your host, Neil Tucker. Today I'll be interviewing Wayne Pratt, NBA superstar Kevin Durant's father. Wayne, how you doing, bud? Good, brother. How you? Good, 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 man. Thanks for coming on the show. No problem. So, Wayne, the smoke is cleared. What made you decide now is the time that you wanted to come out and share your story? Really, I just thought about why everybody else was telling my story and they don't know anything about me. And um, I think because in the position I am in with, with Team Durant and these parents, that people need to know, you know, the real, what really, what's really, what am I really about? Right. You know, why, why did, what, what happened? Not that it really matters to a lot of people, but it, it some people really do care. And then I care too, because I'm tired of everybody else telling my story. Right. So knowing you for a while, you're a pretty private person. You're not big on social media. You don't go out a lot. This interview will make that stand out. So how are you going to handle when people start chiming in on this interview? Man, they chime in already. You know what I mean? Like, my son's been in the league for 12 years, and, and I'm, I'm known in the, in the, out here, so when I walk around in the streets, people say what they want to say. I'm not concerned about that. Um, I'm concerned about not putting this, putting pressure on my son to make a decision to talk about his father, mm -hmm. you know? Let me talk, let me say my story, and then now that that, that backpack full of bricks ain't on him. You know yeah. what I mean? It's, it's more me letting people know who I really am, because nobody does know. Okay, so let's talk about who you are. Let's go back into your past a little bit, before the KD. Um, walk us through your childhood. Um, I was born a DC general. I'm a DC native. Uh, my childhood from, I say, three up until about 10 or nine was in Brentwood Village, Northeast, Montana Avenue area. Mm -hmm. Went to Slow Elementary School, uh, went to Taft Middle School, um, well, it was junior high back then, so it wasn't middle school, and then moved to Palmer Park uh, after 10 years old, moved to Palmer Park. Put a moving Palm Park. That's where I first met um, Curtis. Curtis lived down the street from me. Mm -hmm. Curtis Malone. So we kind of grew up together. Me and my brothers, all us. You know, we used to play all that. So we knew. I knew. I knew Curtis for a long time. Um, and that's when um, the article that I shared with you in the paper, first child abuse case tried in PG County, was me and my brother, my stepfather, who's a white Italian, and my mother. My mother is black. Um, my stepfather hung me up in the attic um, as a, a sort form of discipline. Um, end up that the time that I spun in the attic, lost circulation in my arm, couldn't go to school, and uh, my parents ended up getting arrested, and we got removed from the home. And subsequently, I, I went through a whole bunch of uh, foster care and foster homes, uh, 13 different foster homes. And my last foster home I went to was a lady by the name of Hattie Mae Gamble, who kind of molded me into the man that I've become today from a lot of getting me in church, um, teaching me how to be a man, teaching me my work ethic. And uh, she happened to be Wanda Durant's aunt. Mm. And so through all that negativity and pain and suffering, um, not knowing what God had planned for me in my life, um, that's where I met his mother, Kevin's mom. Gotcha. So take us back to that time you're in, your, you're in the attic. What's going through your head as a kid to be hung in the attic by your father? Betrayal. You know what I mean? You think about, like, these are the people that you're supposed to trust with your life. You know, they're supposed to take care of you. And now you're standing up here thinking, like, what is this going to be like? Like, am I going to make it? And um, and I was worried about my brother, my little brother. Um, rest, rest in peace. He was crying, and I was trying to, and that's how I ended up getting twisted in the rope, was that I was trying to go over there and try to warm him up because it was cold as February's in the attic. And I ended up getting twisted in the rope, and it 
tied the rope tied around my right arm and I lost circulation for, I didn't use my arm for like two and a half years. And so, and I was an athlete, played football, basketball, but I couldn't from 11 to 13, couldn't play sports, couldn't do anything, you know, and I'm going to school, had to learn how to write with my left hand. It was a lot. Um, and I mean, you think of, a lot of thoughts go through your mind about why me, you know what I mean? And when you don't have a relationship with God yet, you don't understand that's a process. And so as a young adult, I just didn't, I mean, I wasn't a young adult, but as a young man, like I just, I couldn't understand why, you know what I mean? But I still was trying to protect my parents at that time because that's what we're taught. Mm -hmm. You know, as, as, as kids that, I don't, I don't want my mom to go to jail. I don't want my stepfather to go to jail. Let's just go back home and fix this. And that was my thought pattern. That's what I thought. Gotcha. So let's speed up a little bit. So your parents get locked up. You're going in and out of these different homes. As a young man growing up, how does that scar you into your relationship when you become a father? How do you treat other people through that transition? Well, I think society, and when I, and back then, I think well, we were going to child psychology during that point. And the one thing that stuck in my mind was one psychiatrist told me that I had, because of what happened to me, I had an 80% chance of doing that to my kids. Mm. And that scared me because I didn't want my kids to go through what I went through. So how do I break that curse? So when I became a father, and my kids can tell you, my, well, my, my oldest two can tell you, I never disciplined them physically because I was so scared that I would do something that would hurt them. Mm -hmm. And so then what do you do anger-wise? When you get to a point where you're frustrated in your marriage or you're frustrated in your relationships, you continue to run. And I think that was a part of me that I had to get out of because every time there was adversity, I would go, I would run mm -hmm. because I still had that anger in me that I didn't want people to see. Did you share that with your kids or Ms. Wanda at the time? Did you let them know your background? Well, Wanda knew my background because her aunt. my kids didn't get it until they were in their twenties. Like I didn't share the article with them until their twenties. And I walked around I walk around with this on me and my phone and I read it because I thank God for what he's done for me and taking me away, how he's brought me through that. Mm -hmm. But what we have to understand as adults and, as, and, and, and what I gave my children that I shouldn't have gave them was when you make mistakes or do things to your children at, at a young age, the effect goes on for years. Right. You understand what I'm saying? You affect them in their decision making. You affect them in, in the love that they should have. And you affect how they take care of their own family. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what affected me a little bit. But I still needed a relationship with God that I didn't have either. Gotcha. Because I felt like he failed me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And God doesn't fail. But I didn't know that. Right. So... What was your relationship with your parents after they got out of jail, and did you ever forgive them? It took me a while. But then I realized, with other adults pouring into me, that me not apologizing to them was me holding on to it. And it's going to stop me from, having, from trusting any relationship. Like, it hurt me in my first marriage. It hurt me with my children. And until I realized that I had to let go and let God and apologize, I mean, and accept their apology to me, I wasn't going to be able to move on and become the man that God wanted me to be. So let's dive into this hurt a little bit. So social media, the media, they talk a lot about Wayne is a bad dad. He's not around X, Y, and Z. What's going through your head as you hear those thoughts or those rumors that circulate on, on the internet? Well, in the beginning, man, it, it hurt. Um, because I didn't, I'm not that guy. You know, 
what I mean? I'm not that guy anymore who was at 20 years old who had a kid at 20 and then had another kid at like 23 and didn't have a clue and got married and didn't have a clue about being a father or being a husband. Mm -hmm. Like, I had no, I had nothing to go on so that I could be a great father and be a great husband. I just had to learn on the fly. And I wasn't ready to be that. Like, I wasn't ready to be a father. I wasn't ready to be a husband. Mm -hmm. And I didn't have the tools or I wasn't prepared to have the, I wasn't prepared to be that. And it wasn't fair to their mother and it wasn't fair to them. Um, but it didn't, it didn't give me the right to run. So looking back on hindsight, what are some of the mistakes that you can identify and accept and own now and forgive yourself as a 23-year-old father? That it's okay to learn on the fly. And that adversity is going to hit us all. And that anyth anything bad that happens in your life, you can learn from. But when you bring something in this world, you got to be responsible, responsible for it until you can't breathe again. Mm -hmm. um, the one thing I will say is that society would have you think that once you make that mistake, you got to stay in that mistake. And that box that I was in in the 20s, I'm not in that box no more. I'm not that dude. Mm -hmm. And I've asked for forgiveness from God, who was the only one that I really need to have forgiveness. And I asked for my forgiveness from my family. And they've given me forgiveness, so I don't need forgiveness from the world. So what were some of your vices as you're spiraling and you're not getting the love from your parents? What were some of your vices that you went to to feel complete? I would say sports, comp comp competition, and just diving into my profession. Uh, I would say drinking, but I wasn't I wasn't that kind of drinker, mm -hmm. you know. And I mean, I'm not I'm not a, you know, I'm a, a social drinker now, but I wasn't no drunk. I always had a job. Always worked, been in uh, um, law enforcement for over 20 some years, always kept a job, um, always able to take care of myself and my kids financially. And sports was a way out for me. Mm -hmm. You know, then I, I didn't have to think about it. So let's, let's transition into your relationship with your family now, with Tony, with Kevin your daughter. What is your relationship at this moment? My relationship is great. Like, I've had a chance to be a father to them and continue to pour into them and, and teach them how not to be and what to be. And God has given, been pouring into me to give me the knowledge from all the mistakes I've made over the life to just continue to help my young adults. I got three boys and a, and a girl, and I'm proud of all of them. I just had my first grandson. Mm. I get to pour into him too. You know what I mean? Like, like, I just thank God for a chance. You know what I mean? Like a chance to, to be a part. Man, it's mm. not about money or prestige, because I don't care nothing about that, really. I just got. I have an opportunity to pour into my, into my family. Mm -hmm. We got the greatest relationship. Um, we have a group chat that we talk to each other almost every day. Um, we all support, have, have supported Kevin and we've all supported each other. And whenever we need it, we're there. And that's what's important. When God made me ready to be the man that he wanted me to be, I stepped in. I had to humble myself because it's a humbling experience to go back and say, hey, Slim, I messed up. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was a part of the letter that I wrote to Kevin and Tony on Father's Day. It was just owning my mess. You know what I mean? 
owning and letting them know like this, not your fault. Because that's how I thought when my parents did what they did to me. I thought it was my fault. I thought it was my problem. But it's not. It wasn't my problem. It was their problem. And I wanted my sons to understand, and my kids to understand, it's not your problem. That was my problem. But I'm here now, and we good. And it's the same thing with my parents. They here with me, and we good. So when I began to forgive them, I was getting forgiveness from mine. Nice. You understand how nice. that works? Nice. And so, and, and until I forgave them, I wasn't getting that forgiveness. I, was, I wasn't getting that. And God was trying to teach me something. You got to give to get. So once I gave that forgiveness to my parents and said, we're good, then I saw the light open up with my kids and they opened their arms to me. You know what I mean? And so, man, we've been, and I told them, I'm going to be in your life longer than I've been out of. I got an opportunity. I got a chance. So I, I say that because I feel like me talking now can help somebody else with my experience mm -hmm. and what I've been through. Because there's probably some fathers out here who are not in their kid's life but want to be. And want, all they want to do is take that step forward, but they're afraid of the backlash, and what people think, mm -hmm. and what they're, and, and they're going to have to go through, but just go through it, because God's going to bless it once you take that first step. So how do you take that first step? What's the advice to that father that was a Wayne Pratt? How do you take the first step? You got you to gotta humble yourself. You got to remove your ego. You got to stop blaming other people for your mistakes. And you just got to own it. You got to own your mess. At what age did you stop blaming yourself? And what age did you own it? I want to say, man, in my 30s, probably in my late 30s, it was after Kevin was in the league. Because when he got in the league, I, I felt like his, his rookie year, I didn't go to one home game. Because right. I felt like I didn't deserve to be there. And why, you're his dad. Why did you have that feeling? Because what people were saying, I was taking in, and I was taking in and making it a part of me. So when they were calling me deadbeat, I was like, maybe I am deadbeat. So what's what's one thing that hurt you the most that the media was saying? That I just came out of nowhere and just showed up in his life. Mm. And that wasn't the fact. I was in and out of his life. But I just didn't crawl out the gutter right. and showed up at the draft and say, hey, right. like water boy, probably right. just say, hey, <laughs> I'm here now. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I was, we can be like Tiger Woods and his daddy. Mm -hmm. Nah, bro, that ain't how that happened. So why did you stay so silent for so long? Because I had to I had to build myself up. You know what I mean? I had to, I had to, I had to dust myself off. Mm -hmm. And I had to, I had to give everything to God and say, look, you do it. My mother called me one day. Cause man, it was Thanksgiving. I was home by myself, feeling, feeling sorry. You know what I'm saying? And my mother told me, she said, why are you fighting for a position you already have? I said, huh? She's like, you didn't fall. And regardless of what everybody else thinks, you're going to always be their father. Yeah. Start being their father. That's all you need to do. And whatever that takes, you do it. Mm -hmm. That means you got to go to them and apologize, apologize. If that means you got to take their anger, take their anger. But just do it. Mm, like Nike. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Just do it. Gotcha. And so I took that. When my mother told me that, man, I was like, yeah, that is my position. I am their father. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to take it. I'm going to be in my position. So how was that initial talk with Kevin, Tony, and your family? Dad is here. I'm ready to be a father. What did that look like? It, didn't, it wasn't a talk. It was action. Just go work. So wherever you need me at, I'm going to be at. That's all I did. Wherever you need me to be, I'm going to be there. 
and I don't need to be on the stage with you. I don't need to be in pictures with you. I just need you to tell me what do you need me to do. I'll be in the bushes. Tell me, call me when you need me. I'm there. Right. If I see it's something that I need to take care of, I'll take care of it. I'm going to be your father. 